Welcome everyone to an APH Virtual Excel Academy. We are so glad to have you with us today. As you come in, feel free to drop your name in the chat, say hello to us. We love knowing who is with us. We are talking today really to our middle and high school students, but everyone is welcome. It is a healthy new year setting short-term goals for long-term success. So if you are one of those students, you might want something that you can write with. Whatever medium you use, that might be helpful today. So again, welcome to the Virtual Excel Academy by APH. Today is Healthy New Year, setting short-term goals for long-term success. I am here in the background, but I am actually going to turn it over to Robin. Robin Clark is usually in the background with me, but not today. Hi, Robin, how are you? I am so excited to be here. I'm excited every virtual Excel Academy, but I get to teach again. So I hope everybody can hear the smile in my voice because I am super excited to be here with you. Hello students and everybody who is with me live and everybody who is watching this recorded. Um, please open up your chat window. We will be using that to interact with each other. You'll notice if you're watching me that sometimes I'm looking at you at the screen, but I'm also looking off to the side. I'm checking out what you guys are saying in your chat window. I am already a little excited because I do see some familiar names that are live with us. But I also want to say a big hello to everybody watching this recorded. All right, so it's the start of the new year. A lot of people set something called New Year's resolutions. Hmm. So of course, I thought we could do a great lesson, not on setting New Year's resolutions, but about learning what are short-term goals? So that's what we're gonna get into today. As Leanne said, make sure you have a place to write down. And if you wanna write down on a note taker or pen and paper, or you wanna make audio notes, go ahead. This is something that I want you to set some goals. And I'm gonna help you do that during our session. Now, I am gonna use a PowerPoint or a slideshow presentation. So sometimes you're gonna be looking at me and other times I'm gonna share my screen so that you can look at some things. Don't worry, I will read everything that's on our slides and we are gonna have a great time. All right, first let's start with what our learning goals are. What do I want you to do and learn about during our session? So I am going to share my screen and you're looking at my slideshow and I'm gonna probably not get into present mode. I'm just gonna show you my first slide because I want you to know what our learning goals are. We have two learning goals in today's lesson. The first one, I want you to identify strategies that will help with short-term goal planning. So we're gonna really focus on strategies. What will help you with those short-term goals? The second is I want you to learn how to develop smart short-term goals and then develop a plan for achieving them. So those are our two first things. But now when we're thinking about goals, I want you to hear a few things. I'm gonna say some stuff to you and I want you to tell me or think about what am I telling you? So tell me what you think these are examples of or what are these? Number one, I want to earn the Olympic gold medal in gymnastics. Number one, I want to earn the Olympic gold medal in gymnastics. Number two, I want to win at Mario Kart. I want to win at Mario Kart. Number three, I want to finish a triathlon. I want to finish a triathlon. Next, I want to visit Italy. I want to visit Italy. 
All right, if you are live with me, go ahead and tell me in the chat, what do you think I'm giving you examples of? If you're watching this recorded, I want you to think, what am I giving you examples of? Donnie has already let me know that I have some really nice sentences. They are, but what are, what are these sentences? Hmm, what could they be? Now keep in mind, our topic is about goals. So I just gave you a list of goals that I have had either now or when I was a little girl. When I was a little girl, I literally had a goal to become an Olympic gold medal gymnast. I wanted to be one with all my heart. It didn't work out, but I had that goal. Zachary has said one important word in the chat. He said desires. And I am going to say, everybody remember that word desire, because that's going to help us with our goals. Now, I'm not even going to lie. One of my goals right now is to win a race at Mario Kart on Wii, because I play with my kids and they kick my butt every single time. I come in last place. So I literally do have a goal to win at Mario Kart. I also want to finish a triathlon this year. And I really, really want to go visit Italy when the world is safe. So those are all examples of a goal. Now I'm going to ask you to think about something. What is a goal? I want everybody to think about that because sometimes that word is hard to describe goal. Now I know what a goal in soccer is. That's when you win and you get it into the net. But what is a goal? That's our first thing that we're gonna think about. So stop and give me some thoughts. What is a goal? Hmm. Now, if you were like me, I kind of felt like I knew what a goal was, but I, I'm having a hard time explaining what a goal is. It's something I wanna do. And I like how Zach in the chat has said, it's something to get done. Yeah. So I do something that I love to do. I go to dictionary.com and I look at the definition. Now, I like how Zach has said that it was something that you wanna get done. Donnie has just shared that it's something you wanna learn. So I'm kind of getting some ideas that goals are things that you do. Would you agree? or disagree that a goal is something you do. Hmm, think about that, agree or disagree. I went to dictionary.com and I looked up the definition of what a goal is. And the definition of a goal is that it is the object of a person's ambition or effort, or it's an aim for a desired result. I kind of liked that definition, but I wanted to look at each one of those words carefully. So right now, what I'm going to do is I am going to share our screen and we're actually going to look at those words together. So I'm going to click share screen right now and you're going to look at my PowerPoint. I'm going to go to present, which should bring us right to where we are so that I can get it nice and big. Here we go. It's loading all right, everybody's looking at my screen and it says, let's think about the words ambition, effort, and desire. What do these words mean? And we really need to understand this because if we're talking about setting a goal, we should really know what they are. So first, let's talk about ambition. Ambition is a strong desire to do or to achieve something. It typically requires determination and hard work. All right. The second thing, desire and determination to achieve success. Now, I highlighted the word determination because I started to learn something as I kept looking at each one of the definitions for ambition, effort, and desire. I learned that the word determination was a big part of this. So, a goal means you need to have ambition, effort, or desire. Ambition means a strong desire to do or to achieve something. 
and it typically requires determination and hard work. So I just learned one thing about goals. They require determination and hard work. Let's look at our second word. Let's look at effort. Effort says it's a vigorous or a determined attempt. And I've highlighted that word determined again. So in a goal, we need to be ambitious or give a good effort. And effort means vigorous, which means strong. You're gonna do it, you're working it up or a determined attempt. And the last word, and Zach mentioned this earlier, a desire. Well, what's desire? I know I desire Oreo cookies. And when I desire Oreo cookies, I'm usually really wanting them. So desire, the definition means a strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. So now that we're learning that goals require determination, and I also noticed the word strong was a lot of description there. So I highlighted that word strong. So now what I want you to do is really think about what a goal is. And a goal is something we really want. We are ambitious for it. We give a big effort and we give desire. Now, everybody think about what's a goal you've ever had before? Think about that. What's a goal you've ever had? Sometimes you find your goals, sometimes you don't always hit your goals, but what's a goal that you've had? Hmm. And now we've learned the definition of it. So I have an activity. What we're gonna do is write a definition of what we say a goal is now that we've learned about it. So I am going to share my screen one more time and we're gonna to work together on this slide which I will share these slides if anybody is watching this recorded so that you can use it later. All right, let's write our definition of a goal. Hmm, everybody think about this. What do we want it to say? What do we say a good definition of a goal is? So you can tell me in the chat window or think about this. What do we wanna say a goal is? So I like that it's something that we, something you might want to learn. I like that Zach said it's something that you desire. Any other ideas? What are some other thoughts? What do we say a goal is? Hmm. I'm even gonna say it's something I have to work hard for. Now, Everybody think about that because we're going to move on. We've written some really great definitions of what we say a goal is. Now, Zach has shared one of his goals. He wants to be a digital designer. That's really cool. Think about some other things. Maybe your goal is something you want to be. But now what I want you to do is we're going to move into part two. Part one, we wanted to learn what a goal was. But part two, we want to know what is the difference between a short-term and a long-term goal? That's what we want to talk about. Because when we talk about goals, guess what? You can have short-term goals or long-term goals, which as a middle schooler or a high schooler, you've probably heard that before. So if you've heard of short-term and long-term goals, that's what I hope to hear. So, but let's really talk about what those short-term goals could be. And let's, let's get some examples of this. So I'm gonna bring us back to our slideshow so that we can talk about what this is. So I'm gonna hit share screen. And I'm sorry if anybody's like, oh, she keeps going back and forth, but I wanna be able to talk with you and I want to work through this as our lesson. All right, so let's talk about what some short-term goals are. Everybody right now, Think of some short-term goals. Now I have two examples. One, find a summer job. That's a short-term goal. And two, save money for something fun like that slightly expensive jacket. Or for me, I'm gonna save up to buy some new gym shoes. I might need to be able to buy um, a bracelet or I might just save up to go a fun place when the world is safe. So 
what I want everyone to think about what are some short term goals? And what are we noticing about those examples? Hmm. So everybody think of some short term goals. You can share in the chat if you like, or just really think about it. What are some short term goals? Hmm. What could be another one? All right. Now let's talk about the definition of what makes something a short term goal. A short term goal is something you want to do soon. Short term goals can help you make big changes. So don't read out on my slide. Did you know that? That short term goals can help you make big changes. So if I want to really finish a triathlon, I can set some short term goals that will help me do that. So is a, sh a short term goal is something you want to do soon. A short term goal, and I'm reading from the slide right now, a short term goal is something you want to do in the near future. So the near future can mean today, this week, this month, or even maybe this year. But a short term goal is something you want to accomplish soon, soon. So I want to finish a triathlon this year. That's a short-term goal. In fact, I want to finish a triathlon at the end of May. So even though that's like five months away, it's still considered a short-term goal. Now, I want everyone to remember this one really important part. Short-term goals can help you make big changes. Has anybody ever heard the phrase, you can do small steps and they add up to big things? Yeah, that's exactly why we want to set short-term goals for long-term success. Because when you do lots of little things, big things can definitely come and happen for us. How exciting is that? Okay, let's keep learning. Now, something that you will take a long time to accomplish is called a long-term goal. So Zach gave us an example of that when he said he wanted to become a digital designer. Or if any of you are thinking about the job you want to have, that could be a long-term goal because it might take you a while to get there. Now, what are some of our benefits to setting short-term goals to get to our long-term goal? Let's think about that. So our long-term goal, we're going to put those on ice and we're going to keep thinking about short-term goals. Why? Why do people set them? First, short-term goals help you think about what you can do right away. You could set a short-term goal today or maybe for just a week. Second, short-term goals can help you manage your time. Did you know that about time management? If you are struggling, like many high schoolers, to manage your time, then short-term goals can help you manage it because you can, set, you can set little steps to get you there. And last, short-term goals. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is a little cracky. I got to take a little drink really fast. And just so you know, you do have Isabel with her hand raised. I'm not sure at what point it got raised. Oh, we will come back to that in just a second. Thanks, Isabel. I love when we get to talk. Short-term goals might seem small, but completing them can lead to big accomplishments in your life and your career. All right, I'm going to stop sharing really fast. And I want you to think about these benefits of short-term goals. And have you ever seen benefits in your life from a short-term goal that you have set? So I want everyone to think about this. And Isabel, I do see that your hand is raised. So I'm going to give you permission to talk. So go ahead and tell me what's on your mind. Zoom webinar. I have a question. Okay. What is a triathlon? What is a triathlon? Oh, okay. A triathlon is a race and it involves three parts. So in a regular race, you just run. So if you've ever heard of a 5K or a marathon, you're running for a long time or maybe yes. a short time. But in a triathlon, you run, you bike, and you swim. So the type of triathlon that I want to do, I would run for three miles or power walk for three miles. And then I would bike 
maybe for five miles on my bike out on the street on a little road that they that they put together. And then I swim. And sometimes it's the whole like length of a swimming pool back and forth. So a triathlon is three different parts. So you can see how that's just not something that I can just fall out of bed to do. If you want to be- I could do that. Well, you know what? They make all different types of triathlons. So you can do a triathlon with a partner where you run one of the legs and somebody else runs another one. So I've had friends where there's three friends and each one of them does a different part. You can do shorter triathlons. And last but never least, I do the type of triathlon that if I can run, I run. But if I need to walk, I walk. Um, and sometimes in the swimming, I swim so slow that at one triathlon I tried, guess what? what? Everybody, I was the last person in the pool. I mean, every other athlete had gotten out of the pool and I was still swimming because it took me a while. I think but you know what? Go faster. None of that really matters because I finished it. That's why I really want to be able to finish another triathlon this year. So that was a great question, Isabel. If you have any other ones, go ahead and keep raising your hand, but I'm going to ask you to mute. And then if you want to keep talking later on, just raise your hand again. Okay. It was great talking with you. And in case anybody else had Isabel's question, that is what a triathlon is. Can I also tell you one other great fact about triathlons? There are a ton of people with vision impairments that complete triathlons. Paralympic triathletes are totally real. So if you're listening to this lesson and you're thinking, well, I love short-term goal planning, but I really love what she said about triathlons, then you could do it. You could set a short-term goal to get you ready to do a triathlon. I love it. All right, so we've talked about some of those benefits to try now to triathlons. Oh my goodness. Now I've got triathlons on my brain. The benefits to short-term goals. It helps you to figure out what you can do right away to get started. It helps you manage your time. And even though they seem small, they help you get big accomplishments. All right. Now I mentioned this before, but I'm going to say it again. And this is the part if you want to write in the chat or write down, I want everybody to start thinking what are some short-term goals that you want to accomplish in the next six months? What are some short-term goals, maybe one or two? What are one to two goals that you want to accomplish in the next six months of 2021? So everybody take a minute and think about that. And while you're thinking about that, I want you to write it down or record it. I see that Zachary said in the chat window that he wants to learn how to use Adobe Photoshop. And I'm kind of there with you. I think it might take me six months to learn Adobe Photoshop. <laughs> but that's a great short-term goal because it leads him to his long-term goal, which is to become a digital designer. All right, I want everyone to think about those one to two short-term goals. And Isabel, I think that is your hand up again, which I'm happy to hear. Would you like to share what your short-term goal is? Oh, Isabel, go ahead. Okay, going once, going twice, three times, three and a half. Oh, there she is. Oh, no, there she goes. <laughs> All right, Isabel, if you unmute you, I am happy to hear your goal. But for everybody else who's watching this right now, this is the part where I really want you to think about what those one to two short-term goals are. So I'm gonna go with my short-term goal that I wanna be able to run a triathlon in the next six months. So everybody else who's watching this recorded, go ahead and make sure you get those goals. Because the next part and the last part of our class, now we're really gonna get into how do we set and how do we keep those great short-term goals? How do we make our goals happen? Because lots of people set goals and they never happen. They don't have a plan. They didn't set the right kind of short-term goal. 
So we're going to talk today about how we can set the right kind of short-term goal. So how do we My do My short-term goal oh. is to do elliptical for three days a week. Okay, there's Isabel. All right. So Isabel's goal was to do the elliptical three days a week. Now, I want everyone to kind of remember that. And we're going to learn a few things and then we're going to circle back to it. So thank you, Isabel, for sharing your goal. Now, you have to learn to develop a strong short-term goal, all right? Because they're setting goals and then there's a strong goal or later, what's a smart goal. So let's listen. I'm going to share with you a few different goals. And I want you to tell me if the goal I am sharing with you seems like a strong goal or just a goal, okay? There's, remember, a strong goal. And you're going to have to think about what do you think that could be or versus what's just a regular goal, okay? So listen to my first one. I would like to earn an A in science. I would like to earn an A in science. Do we think that's a regular goal or a strong goal? I would like to earn an A in science. Hmm, goal or strong goal? I'm gonna say that's a strong goal because it wasn't I wanna get good grades, it was specific. I wanna get an A in science class, okay? That's what made it a strong goal, it was specific. Listen to your next one. I will work out a lot with friends. I will work out a lot with friends. Is that a strong goal or just a goal? I will work out a lot with friends. Hmm. Oh, hello, Joy. Joy in the chat says goal, right? Just a goal. Well, that's not a bad thing. It is just a goal. I agree with you. I will work out a lot with friends. Is it specific? Do we know what a lot means? Or is it just like saying, I want to eat a lot of Oreos? Does a lot mean 20 Oreos? Does a lot mean a whole container of Oreos? All right, great job. If you said that I will work out a lot with friends is just a goal, you are right. Let's listen to your next one. I will improve my mobility skills by crossing streets independently three times a week for a month. Listen again. I will improve my mobility skills by crossing streets independently three times a week for a month. Is that a goal or a strong goal? Now I see Joy in the chat has said it's a strong goal. Do you agree? I will improve my mobility skills by crossing streets independently three times a week for a month. I agree with Joy. That is a strong goal. But what makes that a strong goal? What is it, everybody? Think about that. Hmm. Because we could have just said, I will improve my mobility skills. But that whole second part, by crossing streets independently three times a week for a month, it has specificity, some specifics. So Joy has chimed in in the chat and she said it's specific. There are days, a week, a time frame, and Zach agrees. He says he can see how it's going to happen. Yes. I love that you guys are seeing this because it really is easy to say, I just want to improve my mobility skills. Lots of people say that. But when you add in that last section, now we've taken your goal and we've made it a strong goal. Okay, let's do a few more. And I've got a tricky one for you next. Listen up. I will clean my room. Is that a goal or a strong goal? I will clean my room. What do you think? Joy says it's just a goal. Do you agree or disagree? And Zach says something that I believe my own children say. Yeah, like next year, that's when they'll clean their rooms. I love it. <laughs> 
So actually, Joy and Zachary just did something that really helps us understand this goal, right? I will clean my room sound specific because I have indicated that it's my room, but when am I going to do it? Are you going to do it this week or next year when Zach's going to clean his room? So if you said that I will clean my room is just a goal, you are right. Even though we were, we said it was my room, it's not a strong goal. It's just a goal. All right, here's another one. I will attend one extracurricular activity that I research with my school guidance counselor after school for three months. Listen again. I will attend one extracurricular activity that I research with my school guidance counselor after school for three months. Is it a goal or is it a strong goal? What do you guys think? Just a goal or a strong goal? I will attend one extracurricular activity that I research with my guidance counselor after school for three months. All right, Zachary says it's a very strong goal with lots to do. And Joy agrees that it's a strong goal. What about you watching the recording? Do you think that was a strong goal or a regular goal? I agree with Joy and Zachary. It's a strong goal. I will do one extracurricular activity, but how am I going to do it? I'm going to research it with my school guidance counselor. And then how long am I going to do it? for three months. Yes. So everybody who's with me right now, Donnie and Joy and Zachary, you guys are getting really good at detecting these strong goals from regular goals. I'm gonna give you one more, and this is a goal I've heard lots of my students say. They say, I will cook for myself. It sounds like a good goal, but is it just a goal or a strong goal? What do you guys think? I will cook for myself. It's a good goal. Does anybody agree on that one? I definitely think that's a great goal. But is it just a good goal or a strong one? So Joy in the chat has already said it's just a goal. Do you agree with her? I do. Why is this just a goal? What's missing from this? I mean, it's a really good ambition. I will cook for myself. I think that's great. But why is it not that strong goal that we're looking for? What's missing from it? Hmm. We don't know when you're gonna do it, for how long, what meal? So our next exercise is going to be taking those goals and turning them in to some stronger goals. I want everyone, to, we're gonna work on this together. So. I will work out a lot with friends. How can we take that from just a goal to a strong goal? I will work out a lot with friends. That one was just a goal. How do we make it a strong goal? What do we need? Think about that. What do we need? Hmm. Well, the word a lot, that's not very strong. Yes, so Joy's kind of shared with us right, right now. How many times a week and for how long? We don't even know what that means. So we could add some specifics to it. Donnie, you were right. Donnie chimed in the chat window. He said, this is just a goal. We gotta make this a strong one. So how about I will work out a lot with friends after school. Did I fix it? Did I make it a strong goal? I will work out a lot with friends after school. Hmm. What do you guys think? I think it's kind of struggling a little bit. Yeah, Joy already popped up in the chat. Nope. What if we took out the word a lot, right? If we took out that word a lot, how about I will work out twice a week with friends? Is that just a goal? Oh, look at that. Zachary said two times, right? When I was saying two times. So we must be on the same wavelength. I super love that. So I will work out two times a week with friends. Do I now have a strong goal or do I still just have a goal? What do you guys think? I think we've made a strong goal 
because I will work out two times a week with friends. I know when I'm going to do it. We could even make it super strong. We could turn it to, I will work out twice a week with my friends at the rec center. Well, we'll talk about how we can make these really strong goals, something called SMART goals, SMART goals. So let's learn a little bit about SMART goals, and then we're going to continue to keep writing all of these other things that are coming back for us. Okay, so what I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to put this information up so that you can read it. So we are going to look at my screen. I'm going to share screen right now with you. We're going back to my PowerPoint. I'm going to click the word present, which makes it nice and big. All right. Now, an effective goal is usually referred to as a SMART goal. S-M-A-R-T. You might have already heard of something called a SMART goal, but we're going to take some time to learn this. And this is, this is the big part of it. If you already know what kind of short-term goals you want, these are the things that will help make your goal happen. So S means specific. M means measurable. A means achievable. R is relevant. And T is time-bound. Let's talk a little bit more about what those all mean. So specific, this means let, ooh, let them write down exactly what you want to achieve as specific as you can be. So remember in our goal about the guidance counselor, I will go and do extracurricular activities that I research with my guidance counselor once a week. So we know specifically what we want to do. Now the next one, measurable. What are the little steps that you can take to get where you want to go? So this means I will do it three times a week. I will do it every day. I will do it once a month, right? That's telling me, how can I measure? What can I really do? So SMART goals are always specific. It doesn't just say I will work out a lot. It's I will work out with friends. I will work out at the rec center. I will use my Beachbody app. I will work with a triathlon trainer. So we know, we know the details. Measurable, the little steps. How much are you going to do this? I will do it for 30 minutes once a week. I will cook breakfast for two times a week. Maybe for an hour, maybe it'll take some more. Maybe I will just make breakfast every day. Now we know every day you're gonna work on making breakfast. I'm gonna meal plan on Sunday nights. Now we know the details. So the S is for specific. The M is for measurable. Now let's talk about the A. A is achievable. And the question you wanna ask yourself is, is this goal something you can actually reach? <coughs> So for me to say, I want to win an Olympic gold medal right now, that's not achievable. I am not going to be able to win an Olympic gold medal. So can you actually do this? Now, just because something is hard doesn't mean you can't, but you have to have realistic expectations. Is this something you can actually reach? Is it doable in your schedule to go to extracurricular activities once a month? If it is, you've got something you can achieve. Will it take hard work? Probably. So the A is for achievable. Can you really do this, even if it seems hard? The R is relevant. Does this goal fit what your teen or your student dreams about? Hmm. So for me, if I want to win or finish a triathlon and I set a goal to become a singer, those things don't go together. Why would I become a singer if I want to finish a triathlon? So does this goal fit what your teen dreams about? So is it, is it going to help you get to what you really want to happen? And the last one, time bound. Is this goal achievable in the time frame that your teen has set? 
I should tell you, I wrote this PowerPoint to send to your parents to help with, to help you with it. So that's why it says the words your team. I did this so that your parents or your teachers could help you with it. So time bound. Is this goal achievable in the time frame that your teen has set? So is it realistic? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Leanne. I need you to do me a favor. Can yes. you reassign the caption list for me? I am sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, I saw her come back, but I will do it again. All right, we should be good. And I do see closed captions happening, Leanne. Good. So we're good to go. Thank you, everybody, for that little commercial break. So time bound. Can you accomplish it? Can I really train and do what I need for a triathlon in May? So we want to learn how to set smart goals, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Those are the things that we want. That's what makes our goals strong goals versus just a goal. So now that we've gone through all of that, I'm going to stop share. We're going to go back to our goals that we were just talking about. And let's see if we can fix our goals and make them the smart goals that we want them to be. So we did the one about working out, but now let's talk about, I wanna cook for myself because that is a great goal for all of you is to say that you wanna be able to cook for yourself. How can we make that a smart goal? How can we make that a smart goal? So I'm even gonna type it in the chat window. I will cook for myself. We want to make this a smart goal. What should we do right away? Is it specific? Kind of not. So let's start first with making it specific. Um, let's see. Do I want to cook breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks? Hmm. Or do I just want to help cook? I'm going to say, oh, Donnie. Yes, Donnie jumped into the chat just as I was thinking about this. He says he wants to help prep dinner every night. All right, that makes it really good. Now, how else can we make this a SMART goal? So he said every night, but for how long? Every night for two years? Every night for a month? Or maybe just weekdays or just weekends? Let's even make that a little bit stronger. I will help prep dinner. Hmm. Every night. Whoa. Donnie said for a year. Whoa. Wow. I love it. Well, we did say six months. So how about Donnie? I will help prep dinner every night for six months. All right. What do you think of our goal right now? Is it getting to be smart? Now, let me ask you this question. Is this achievable? Is this a doable goal? Does it fit your schedule? Are you at home every night for dinner where you can make this happen? If your answer is yes, then this works. If your answer is like, well, I do go to soccer or choir practice, then we might need to tweak it. And we could say, I will help prep dinner on the weekends for six months. So everybody's catching on to that. Okay, great job. Let's do one more goal reinvigoration here. And let's talk about this cleaning my room goal. All right. So I'm going to put it in the chat. I will clean my room. How can we make this one a smart goal? Because this is a good goal to have. Organization makes everybody work better. So how can we make this a smart goal? I will clean my room. Hmm. Well, is it specific? Yes, we know what room we want to clean, your bedroom. Okay, now let me ask another question. Is it achievable? Yeah, I would say cleaning your room is achievable, but what about, ooh, Zachary just popped up with something. He says every evening before bed, is that measurable? Yes, it is measurable. Every night, every evening before bed. Now he could have just said every evening, but notice that he said before bed because that makes it even more specific. So now we've made this time bound, it's measurable and it's achievable. 
So our new goal is I will clean my room every evening before bed. We could even say I will clean my room every evening before bed for 30 minutes, right? We could add that little time on there so that you could set a timer that will help you with your time management skills. We could also say I will clean up my room and make sure there are no dishes in my room every evening before bed. That's even more specific. If you struggle with leaving dishes in your room, like a lot of teenagers, you might want to include that little detail. Because when you include that detail, it allows your brain to focus on what you need to do. So SMART goals help you to see the details and it helps you to find greater success. Okay, you guys are super good. Let's do, let's do one more. Now we already gave you a specific one, but let's give, let me give you a half one. How about I will improve my mobility skills? What if we just said that one? Because these are really common ones that a lot of people like to set. So I put it in the chat for my live students. For my recorded students, think about that. I will improve my mobility skills. Sounds good. But how do we make this smart? What do we need right away? And you can't use the example that I just gave you. How can we make this one a smart goal? Is this specific? Hmm, I don't think it is. So let's add some specifics. Ooh, Zach said he's gonna use his monocular when crossing streets to look for cars. I'd say that's specific. Yeah, that's how we will do it. But now we also need it to be measurable. So when, how many times, when do we wanna work on this? What do you guys think? Using your monocular when crossing your streets to look for cars. Should we try to do it like once a month or twice a month? We could add something like that in. So the measurable part is that he will use it to look for cars, not just he will use his monocular. We know why he's using it. But now how long? Twice a week, maybe he'll work on that. Is this a relevant goal? Yes, it's a relevant goal to your life and to increasing your skills. And last, is this achievable? Hmm. Yes, it's something you could do. All right, I think you guys have definitely figured out how to make goals, smart goals. So right now, I want you to look at the goals that you just set. Remember earlier on, I asked you to think of what's one to two short-term goals you want and take a hot second and think, did I write a goal or did I write a smart goal? And I'll even do this too. My goal was that I wanted to finish a triathlon. Hmm, it's a good goal, but that wasn't very smart. It's not a smart goal. So you look at your goals and if you don't have one, you can listen to mine. I'm gonna type it in the chat. I will finish a triathlon, that three part race, but that's just a goal. How about if I say in May, of 2021, now we've got a time bound, I've got a deadline, but how am I going to do it? What are my specifics? What if I said by training each leg once a week? Okay, everybody, look at your goal. Did you make it a SMART goal? Look at my goal. I will finish a triathlon in May of 2021 by training each leg once a week. Did I write a SMART goal or did I write just a goal? What do you guys think? Do I have a SMART goal? I think I do. I know that I am going to ride my bike, swim and run or walk once a week. And Zach agrees, so thank you very much. All right, now we're wrapping up. The big part of this was for you to learn how to do a SMART goal. But here are some things I really want you to think about when we talk about keeping your goal. And so we're, we're gonna talk last about the secrets to achieving your goals. And I do have this on the PowerPoint that I will add, but I'm just gonna talk you through it right now. But this is all on the PowerPoint in case you wanna be able to use this as a guide. All right. 
there are a few secrets now. Now that you have your short-term goal, how do you make it successful? One, you write a SMART goal. Now let's talk about those secrets that will help you actually achieve it. Because if I don't ever leave my house, I'm never gonna get ready for that triathlon. All right, number one, accountability. This is something that will help you achieve your goal. Sometimes this is known as an accountability partner. This can be a friend, a family member, or even a teacher. So maybe if you want to increase your mobility skills, you can work with your mobility instructor. They could be your accountability partner. You tell them the goal and they will say, you got to pull out that monocular every time we're in community-based instruction. So find somebody that you can do this with. It could be a parent, like maybe your mom checks your room. Maybe not. You might not like that idea. But you want to have somebody that will help you. It could totally be a friend that will ask you, how are your goals going? Second, get it written down on a calendar, on paper, have it posted. Do something that gets it going. You could put it in your Braille notes and have it remind you every Monday at four o'clock, this is your goal, but you want to get that reminder. That will give you some accountability because people write goals all the time and they just float away. We want to keep this one dead set in front of us. Now, the last one in our accountability section is that the deadline, finishing my triathlon by May, it's not a suggestion. That's when the race is. So I'm going to need to hustle to make it happen. It means I can't wait until May 1st to start working on my triathlon goal. I'm going to need to work on it all the time. I got to hustle for it. The reward, though, is sweet satisfaction. I'm going to finish that triathlon no matter how slow I go. So what's your first secret to achieving your goal? It's going to be accountability. Have a friend, have a partner, have a teacher work with you on helping you do these goals. Nobody ever said you had to do it alone. Second, write it down. Make a calendar reminder. Have it posted. Put it somewhere that you know it will keep coming to you. And three, give yourself that deadline, that time-bound part, and work for it. That is secret number one. Secret number two comes with something we talked about at the very beginning. It has two words, and a lot of people don't like it. Hard work. Hard work. The key words are hard work. Most goals don't just appear completed with a swish of a wand. Although if I could be like Harry Potter and just have some spell, triathlon Osorio, and then all of a sudden I'm a triathlon. No, that's probably not going to work. I'm not going to be a triathlete that way. The only way I'm going to be able to be a really good triathlete is putting in the hard work for it. So remember that goals do not just appear done. Be prepared for the hard work. Talk with a teacher or a friend or a parent. What kind of hard work do you think I need to put in in order to make this goal happen? If you want to cross streets independently, ask your mobility instructor. What do I need to do? What kind of work do I need to put in in order to make this goal happen? Now, this is a phrase that my kids are totally tired of hearing, but I tell them it all the time. What you put in is what you get out. If you didn't put any work in, don't expect to reach it. So be prepared, know what kind of hard work, ask people, hey mom, I wanna help prep dinner every night. How much time do you think I should do for that? Or how much effort do I need? All right, and that leads me to the second part of secret number two, anticipate the workload and rise to it. Now, a lot of times you find out, I gotta do all of this work, what? I don't want to do all of that work. It gets overwhelming. So if you find yourself saying, yeah, I really wanted to do that goal, but I wasn't really willing to do the work. Stop right there. Break down the hard work into smaller steps. Break down the work. If you feel overwhelmed by how much work it is, make it in smaller steps. It will make it so much more manageable. For example, running three miles is not something I can do naturally. So I run for a minute, I walk for a minute. I run for a minute, I walk for a minute. I've taken something really big and I've made it smaller. All right, 
Secret number two, hard work. Hard work, remember, we don't have a Harry Potter wand that we could just wave and make our goals happen. No triathlosorios. And I've become a triathlete. If I wanna finish a triathlon, I gotta get on my bike and I gotta make it happen. All right, number three, failure is part of the plan. Have you ever heard of the phrase failing forward? Failure helps you to identify what's not working, what you need to improve on. Failure can be totally frustrating, but this is where having other people help you, help you fail forward. So don't let somebody let you give up on your goals. Find people that will help you learn from your mistakes. So secret number three is failure is part of the plan. No one said it was ever going to work out perfectly. All right, we're ending with our last two secrets and they work together. The first one is reflection. Throughout your process, look back and see what you're learning, what you need to improve. Reflect upon what is working and what's not working. Then you'll know what to change. That also means the last secret, honest feedback. You can't put in a C effort and expect A quality feedback. Ask people, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? Where can I improve? Because when you get other people's insight and your own self-reflection, you'll be able to figure out where you're going wrong and how you can move forward with your goals. So those are your secrets to setting your short-term goals. We've learned now that we just don't wanna have a goal. We wanna have a SMART goal. And then we wanna use our secrets to make those goals happen. I will make sure that I share the, a full PowerPoint that guides you through this. Thank you everybody for helping me set a smart and doable triathlon goal. I will report back in May if I made it or not made it, but I'm really going for it guys. And I hope everybody has learned that when you set short-term goals, they give you nothing but long-term success and everybody can do it. So thanks for joining me. Thank you so much, Robin. I guess I'm going to have to work on my New Year's resolution goals <laughs> and make them a little smarter. Tomorrow, if you're joining us tomorrow, it is Snowmen at Night, an accessible multi-sensory story time meant for our students with more multiple impairments, a little slower pace, but again, everyone is welcome. If that's not for you, we will see you next week. Robin, any tidbit you can share on next week? That you can think yes, about the we're so head? excited about everything that's coming about. In fact, next week for our middle school and high school crew, we start our travel series. So we are going to get started with Up, Up, and Away, your guide to airline travel. Huh. We'll learn all different types of travel transportation modes. We're starting first with airlines and we're going through everything, buses, trains, and eventually onto rideshare. So you don't wanna miss that orientation and mobility series we're having. Ooh. Oh, Leanne. All right, right. yep. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye all. Bye everyone. <laughs>